Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Saturday morning, so you know it's time for another live edition of the Extra Point. We got Tasha T. Sizzle dressed in her uh, Black Panther garb, ready to do it for a time. Forever. We got Coop DeVille out and about the streets of Nashville, checking in on location. Great to have you guys on board today. Got a lot to get to. We got a short time to do it, so let's get right to it. But first, a word from our sponsor. Wait a minute. First of all, if this ain't the most ratchet show on earth, you had me live <laughs> broadcasting from a whorehouse. Now you got Coop in the work mobile, mobile. <laughs> Hey, this is no excuses.com TV. That's how we get oh, we hood, we hood. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> we're sponsored by May Jane's Coffee. That's M-A-E-J-A-N-E-S Coffee.com. You can get your Colombian and your whiskey blend coffee, freshly ground by my lovely daughter, who went to uh like an expo thing last night. And if you look at her Instagram which is Sasha Fierce 923, I think that's what it is. Um, she has in her store is Black Excellence. And it was a great opportunity where you network and hand out business cards and things of that nature so we can get more business for May Jane's going. Again, that is May Jane's Coffee, M-A-E-J-A-N-E-S Coffee.com. Excellent. Good job by you. Good job by you, Sasha Denise. Um, this episode is also brought to you by Wolverine Comics. Uh, and that's headed by one Michael Hasso. That's J A S S O. Make sure you check them out on Instagram. Now, um, let's get right to it. It's College Football Saturday, and um, the first official college football ranking, the one that everybody cares about, comes out a week from this Tuesday. But you know how we do this at this point. We ain't waiting on no Tuesday. We got our two experts right here, right now. So, what we're going to do is we're going to kick off today's show with the first official official. Top four ranking of the, the Extra Point College Football Poll. Tasha T. Sizzle, the floor is yours. Who's your top four? Uh, I ain't going to do like they – no, they always start. They do what? One, three, four, and five. <laughs> I'm right. just going to go on and do it. I hate to say it. The F.I. is first. Okay. Georgia, Georgia two. I got Tennessee third. Which can which is subject to change, and then followed up by the Michigan Wolverine. All righty. Now you have the, the the Buckeyes first. Why? Why is Ohio State number one in your opinion? Um, just right now. I mean, you can give them the same argument that you give Michigan that they really don't have a tough schedule. They really haven't played anybody, but everything they're doing so far is working. They slowly they started <laughs> slow against Notre Dame, and right. but but everything they're doing is just working. It's almost looking like it's saving ass almost. Right. And they're not squeaking by with their quote unquote right. schedule. They're handling business like like a, a favorite is supposed to week in and week out. Cool. Who is your top four this week? Uh, I got to get with the number one seed. Got to go to Tennessee. They beat four ranked teams. They beat Bama at home. They're, they're the only team that's played four to five ranked teams. So I got to give them number one, Georgia two, uh, Ohio State three only because Ohio State has played nobody. I'm not saying they're terrible, but going by the eye test and who they play, they can't be one or two right now. And the only reason Georgia's two, they beat Oregon. They manhandled them. So at least and who's number four? Team. Who's number four? Uh, Michigan is number four. Between Michigan and Clemson, that took right now those two teams are tied. All right, so you have a tie at number four. Tasha, you're shaking your head. Chime in. Again, I just don't like Clemson's style of play. I don't like who they play, even though they the ACC is out there doing some things this year. Yeah. I just, I've just never really been a fan of Clemson j- getting the pass for not doing anything. So you're not a fan of DJ Uglielele? I mean, you know, I'm going to always bet on black, but, you know, eh, I get tired yeah. of them running running down that hill. And I said, it's all fun and games. He's going to fall down that hill. <laughs> He's going to fall down that hill one day. Um, mine is one of the most reliable coups. Go ahead, Coop. Yeah, yeah. yeah but, I, but I'm still going back to the Ohio State and Michigan teams have not played anybody. I give Michigan the, the pass on. They played a Penn State team that we knew couldn't score, but at least they have played a tough opponent, a team with some resistance. Right. Right. But also, and Clemson, uh, 
But you know how they also rank these teams that sometimes don't need to be ranked. Oh yeah, most definitely. You know, it like that. They can go. They can fall out in the ACC. You got your NC State. You had a Wake Forest. You had these other teams that were ranked. But who's to say that they're going to even finish winning the rest of the season? So they, at the end of the season, it all comes out in wash. Right. Yeah, and, I, think, and, I think Wake Forest is a, is a legit uh, top ten team. I think that because they can score, and I don't, I don't really worry about NC State. They're having quarterback issues now, but I definitely can say. Wake and Clemson are two teams that should be in the top ten. Now Clemson Maybe plays an undefeated Syracuse today. Top 10. Yeah, but now Clemson plays Syracuse today. Uh, will we find out anything more about Clemson play, uh, playing an undefeated ranked opponent in Syracuse, or is Syracuse one of those teams? To your point, Tasha, they may not even be ranked uh, in a few weeks. I think Syracuse is one of those teams. I'm glad to see the Cues coming back. You know, showing some sort of respect for themselves because. The last 10 or so years, I, they were just sitting in the dome, just, I guess, running wind sprints, suicide. Right. Right. Yeah. That, yeah. right. Do this one for Donovan McNabb, please. Um, Now, I, I got uh, Tennessee number one for all the reasons that Coop said. I have Georgia number two because of what they did to, to Oregon, who's now back in the top ten. I have Michigan third and Ohio State fourth. And the only reason why I have Michigan ahead of Ohio State is, one, we hold the belt right now in the Big Ten. And, two, for all, because I think that if you want to go quality of win, and this is not to throw shots, quality of win, I think Penn State is a more quality win than Notre Dame at this time. So give me a few more weeks for uh, Ohio State to, to wrap up their schedule, and then maybe we'll, we'll check back. I don't think my opinion is going to change after a date with Iowa today because we saw how future they are on offense. Now, last Sunday, I, something I, I watched something on TV that made me immediately think about you two specific I'm, I'm watching cbs the the the, uh, sun, the sunday afternoon game the bills and the chiefs of course and um right after that came on 60 minutes so um after 60 minutes uh was was airing i saw that deon sanders mr prom time himself was going to be the featured a uh, segment so i watched the segment uh, he was shining a, a light on hbcu athletics on some of the issues he had uh with recruiting with facilities things of that nature. They, they covered a wide gamut of, uh, of topics, but it made me think about you two because you two said something in passing last week that I want to follow up on. Both of you agreed that Dion is doing too much, which is something that was kind of alluded to in that um, interview, that he's kind of doing too much. Is this about really helping these African-American kids at these HBCU facilities, or are you exploiting these kids and using them to get a Power 5 job? Now, when he was asked about this, he said, hey, I'm going to entertain it if the Power Five come a-knocking, which who, who wouldn't think that Dion would say that? So I'm going to come back to you two to follow up on the doing too much. Are you a fan of Dion Tasha as an HBCU coach? Nope. No. Wow. I said it when, when everyone was throwing his name out there in the beginning about him being a coach. They called that man prime time <laughs> Like, to me, it's all about him. Now, one thing I do love, I love that he is making people, for whatever reason, look more at the HBCU. But I think they're looking more for him because no other HBCU is getting the type of recruits that he is getting. That, that is true. That is and, true. And, you know, I don't like what he's doing in that aspect for HBCU football. And then you're causing all this drama. You're going down there now. I mean, he's not the first pro or former pro to be a coach somewhere, but we don't have one that was ever to his magnitude, to his level, to his superstardom, to his fame, mm -hmm. to be a coach. Like you got Eddie George at TSU, which I think is a bad hire as well. Uh, he's not garnering the same type of recruitment or excitement around him. Not even locally in Nashville, there's not much buzz around him being the coach of TSU. Right. I mean, and that I do understand that. I think it just plays more to, I think, the students. You do have students or recruits who say, I want to play for coach such and such. I want to play for coach such and such. But then when coach such and such leaves, are you going? Are they going to be like Lincoln Riley and take, take the whole 
the, the bathtub, the water, and the baby with them <laughs> when, when they leave. Because let's, right. I mean, let's be truthful. A lot of these kids, you do have a few that say, I want to play for this particular university. But the majority of them are playing for a coach. And so when the coaches leave and now this transfer portal, they're able to go ahead and leave with them. And right. I think that's something that's going to happen right. if Dion leaves. Cool. What, now, you said that he was doing too much last week as well. What are your thoughts on his job right uh, so far as the head coach of Jackson State? I mean, I I watched that interview twice. I watched it again yesterday. And Prime is doing Prime. Mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't knock him because his persona can't change. He won't change. So when we're looking at coaches, especially HBCU coaches, We've never had a coach with the charisma, the right. pizzazz. Like, he's in tune with it because he has a son who's actually that age. So right. he's so connected. And I say he's doing too much because it's still all about him. Like, nothing's changed in black college football. People keep saying, oh, he's bringing top, he's bringing issues up. Everybody has brought those issues up for years. The only difference is people listen to Prime because the way he expresses it. Right. Like, I'm, I'm kind of like what you said, Tasha. Nothing's changed. All other HBCUs are terrible. They, they're, the, the brand of football is horrible. It's garbage. It's right. hard to watch on TV. It's, it's, it's hard to watch Live. And I and I speak on these. Uh, I go on a lot of swag sites, and they call me a hater because I'm like, if you ever go to one of these games, it is like watching a glorified high school game. Yes, wow. your attention span is gone. Nobody knows the players. None of these players are going anywhere. Maybe one might get a undrafted trial. Like it is hard to watch HBCU football. HBCU football to me is dead. And I know oh, people wow. hate for me to say that. Like nobody wants to watch that, dude. Like the last week, can you can you actually say you'd rather go see Jackson State and Gramlin or sit at home and watch Tennessee and Alabama? What what would you do? Would you get on the road and drive to Jackson, Mississippi to watch Jackson State and Gramlin? Or would you stay at home and watch Tennessee and Alabama? I flown. I flew to Texas to watch Michigan and Florida. Flew! Right. Flew. Like, it's, it's, I, I know people, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. It's dead, man. Like, it's, they're playing backyard football, and he's trying. I give him all the props. But nobody wants to see Prairie View and Alcorn State, except for those people that live in those little towns. Or right. um, got, yeah, you're not going to get that game on CBS at 2.30. You can't bring that level of football back. The recruits right. don't, don't feel like they want to go play for Bethune-Cookman. Nobody cares about Eddie George in Nashville. These guys that play at Innsworth, Brentwood, they could care less mm -hmm. about trying to go over there and play for Eddie George. They don't care about Eddie George. Right. right. Eddie and George is the best. Only the alumni. Eddie. Right. Only the alumni. They come yeah, back to, to, to yeah, see friends and he's family. And, the needle. Like, he can't go to Innsworth for NBA and get any recruits. Mm -hmm. Those people are not telling those guys to go to TSU. Like, right. they're being honest. They're not to, those Because guys it, doesn't, those it doesn't look good for their program. Yeah, they they exactly. want to say, oh, we're putting athletes in Division One college football, yeah. Division One this, Division One yeah. that. And they're not thinking about it. You can't it. tell a guy that... Yes. No, because it's a lower brand of football. And you're going to a crappy facility. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. those guys are trying to get their guys to Auburn. They're, they're going everywhere else. They, they don't want to play in the hole. No, that, that's only good for old people my age and up. Nobody yeah, is clamoring but, to play but in the hole. Yeah, but nostalgia, because Coach Merritt ain't going to be out there roaming them sidelines. And Coach, what you, what you said. And what Coach you Eddie said. Rob ain't gonna be out there grambling, roaming them sidelines. Now to put a nice little bow on this, my godson Miles, our, our family, he's playing varsity football now, and I won't tell him yes. to play at, at Bethune Cookman. I'm gonna tell him to go to Michigan, Ohio State, Florida, oh, Alabama. He loves Alabama right now. I'm not telling my nephew to go play at TSU. I'm just being honest. 
But well, the, but, but it also, I mean, that's coach. true. But it goes to the point of, you know, they say if you're talented, they're going to find you. And I do yeah. believe that, but you'll be seen more if you're playing on ABC, CBS, ESPN, yes. Fox, and the others. Right. And Drew puts a nice little bow on this. He says it's all about the brand. That's what we're going to see. Go ahead. Yeah, hey, also, the guy Travis Hunter, the DB that plays for Jackson State, nobody doesn't even know he's playing football right now. He's the number true. two recruit in the nation. And no, you got to think that he's looking on Saturdays and see the Georgias, the tip. He see those guys vying for a national title, and he's playing for the dang on celebration bowl. Well, hold on, that, that doesn't... think about it, cool. This kid decommitted from Florida State, who was on national TV last Saturday on ABC yeah. playing Clemson. Yeah, right. He to be looking at his peers like, what am I doing? I'm playing on ESPN, ESPN three at one o'clock. Right. Like nobody knows I'm playing football. Right. And if, when if, when everybody at the school coming to see the coach and them and them Jackson State drum ma- uh, uh drum majors and the majorettes. So, all right. So, so I think okay. So now we got a clear picture of what you all meant by doing too much. I just thought that the timing of that the, of that interview was apropos because just twelve hours earlier you guys were saying that hey I'm not quite sold, but I wanted to get your full comments on that. Good job by you. Shouts out to Drew Merriman and AP Coach chiming in with some great. Points. Now, let's move over to Sunday, the NFL. We have a rematch going on in the city of Nashville. The Indianapolis Colts and the Tennessee Titans meet for the second time in uh, basically a month. On October the 2nd, the Titans went up to Indianapolis, won 27, I'm sorry, 24 to 17. Um, Jonathan Taylor exited that game with an ankle injury. He's set to return this week. Indianapolis has won two straight since losing to Tennessee. Tennessee's on a three-game winning streak after going 0-2 to start the season. Tasha, who are you putting your money on uh, on Sunday, uh, Derrick Henry or Jonathan Taylor, to have a better game? Oh, uh, let's see. The Colts are, what, 3-2, and they got that tie with Houston. The tie to 3-2. Um, go on and get your crown ready. <laughs> what? Is it, is it time already? Yeah. Okay. So you're going with the king, a very wise and worthy choice, I might add. Now, Coop, I'm coming to you because we're going to flip flop these questions. The last time we asked Tasha this question, we're coming to you with it this time. Who do you trust more on Sunday, Ryan Tannehill or um, Matt Ryan? Oh, oh, uh, uh, definitely uh, Ryan Tannehill. Oh, you go with Ryan over over Ryan. Okay, hey, please explain. And yes, oh, mommy, yeah, he's dropping. Yeah, he's a walking turnover. He's a walking turnover. Literally a walking turnover. Hey, he's an apple pie at McDonald's right now. You can flip <laughs> him over it's, anytime. It's like, dry. The, the the new apple pies, not the old ones that used to be good. Right. <laughs> the new ones that they made yeah, with, no, a healthy, no. with a healthy flaky crust. <laughs> hey. hey. That, did you realize last week they let that guy throw the ball 53 times? Right. Now, Tennessee can't stop the pass. So that might not be a recipe for disaster on Sunday if you're the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, okay, so yeah. you're going with King Henry. You're going with Ryan Tannehill. So it sounds like you two are taking the Titans to sweep the Colts for the third straight season. Am I correct, Tasha? <laughs> Say it with your chest. I mean, it's I, I I don't know. Wait a minute, I'm trying to put look up. Oh, I you think know. I got a, no, I think I got a coat on my fantasy team, so that's gonna so that's how you're it. It. <laughs> Don't don't use don't use that. Yeah, I got a wide receiver who's who's projected to get eleven points. <laughs> you okay? So you dancing? You dancing like Gregory Hines around here? Um. What 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 are you going? You saying Titans? Say it with your chest. Put it out there. I'm gonna go on and say the Titans. All right. So my, look, before she says anything else, me and my friend Kathy, they're going to kill me because they are Colts fans. But I'm gonna have to go with the Titans. Study long, study wrong, Mabel. You know that. And and, and uh, Tasha, you hesitating? They they own you today. Cool. We know you're gonna say it with your chest. Hey. Who hey. wins Sunday? The Titans are almost invincible coming off five weeks. But Indy cannot lose this game. 
Oh, they're buried so, if they do. Exactly. Like, this is their season. I'm going with the Titans, but I wouldn't be shocked if they went in there and pulled it out because it, it's lining up that the Titans should win. But the, the indie season is on the line. They can't go 0-2 against the Titans this early in the season. But I'm going Thank with you. the Titans, but I'm not sold. I'm not sold. I'm not sold on now, Tasha, let me ask you this. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Wait, hold on. The the, the comments, they're, they're loving you right now with the tight spit. Oh, did that hurt a little bit? Ask Martrice Hastings. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody pulled your string, Trees. <laughs> <laughs> Get him, now, sister. <laughs> the, 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 Tasha, let me ask you this. In all seriousness, if Tennessee does not slam the door on Indy tomorrow, does Indy walk them down and take the AFC South title? Yes, because the AFC South is terribly. <laughs> Just terrible in Charles Barkley's voice. Coop, do you agree? If Tennessee doesn't close the door on Indy, they're going to get walked down? I, I think so because Indy has an easier schedule the rest of the way. They've already they played Kansas City and got a win. So mm -hmm. that was big that they got a win against the Chiefs. So that means not only the Titans got to beat the Chiefs, they will have to beat Dallas, Philly. It's going to be a tough road to hold. And they have to play, what, don't they play the, the Texans the week after this? Next week? They or is it Jack? They, they, they got the so, Texans and then the yeah. Chiefs on Sunday Night Football after that. So these two weeks, they could wrap the division up or they could put themselves in a bad position. So the next two weeks are going to be big weeks. Also, this week is uh, alumni week. All the former Titans are in town this weekend. So if anybody want to go see any former Titans, just go to the W Hotel downtown. Everybody's staying there. News you only get right here on the extra point. We got boots on the ground in Coop yeah. DeVille, Tennessee. That's what's up. Now, Joe Shelton checks in and says Titans will win, but we'll lose a game to Jack. Oh, Joe, you out of prison. Thanks, Joe. Hey, he's out of he's out of prison. <laughs> Welcome home, Joe Shelton. Um, now, to his point, as much as I hate that comment, he's right. Tennessee's going to lose the one they're supposed to win. Hopefully, it's not this one. Yeah. Especially says, period. Yeah. So, we're going to move on to the next game. Now, we got a Sunday night game on a, on a kind of a mushy Sunday schedule. But this Sunday night game intrigues me. I call it Tasha's bet on Black Bowl. We got the Pittsburgh Steelers coming to Miami to take on the Miami Dolphins. And on Sunday Night Football in the T-Sizzles bet on Black Bowl, let me ask you this. Let's start right here. Let's pick this conversation back up. Tasha, should Tua be playing Sunday night? He's, nope. he's going to play. Nope. What did, what the, what's that meme I sent you? The famous Drago line, after he knocked the hell out of Apollo Creed and ended his life. <laughs> If he dies, he dies. Come on, don't 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 kill off Creed like that. Don't, don't do that. If he dies, he dies. Um, I'm worried about about Tua playing this week, and you're gonna play against a defense that's as nasty and tenacious as Thank they come. Without TJ Watt. Without TJ Watt, they're still very dangerous. Just ask Tom Brady. We'll get into that in a little bit. Cool. Should uh, Tua be playing on Sunday night? Yeah, he he been out two weeks. What's what's wrong? I mean, remember, he, gotta play he only had, remember he only had one concussion. Yeah, I, I think he hey, he been out two weeks. I don't see any problem with it. Okay, all right. Well, so just, so Coop says to pull him. Just hey. if they get anywhere near him, they're gonna call rough in the pass. <laughs> that is true. If you breathe hey. on him, they're gonna call him. But did y'all see his interview when now they saying that if, if at any time you stumble and do this and that, that you can't play? And he's like, well, I don't want it to be called the tour rule. It's your fault. Had you not it's died your... in that first game yeah. when you when you obviously was concussed. The man was doing Thriller on his back on national right. TV. No, I'm talking about when they played the, the Bills. Oh, when he got oh, the seven. first concussion. I'm talking about the first yeah. one. You said Thriller? Yeah, nah. he was, he was How do I log out? How do I log out? No, no, you're going to stay logged in. I mean, and he's, like, <laughs> and he's all, oh, I want to do this. I want to play for my team. I want to do that. Tua, do you remember the same team you out there fighting for, wanted to get rid of you? They wanted to bring in Tom Brady. They wanted to bring in old freak nasty himself as well. 
Deshaun Watson. Oh, right, I was just saying, can you tell everybody who's freaking nasty is? Right? And, 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 now right. you, <laughs> and now you sitting up here yeah. saying, oh, I got to do this and that for the team. Man, you only as good as your last contract. That hey, is very true in the NFL. For, what, what did we speak on earlier this season? He ain't he ain't playing for his team. He playing for them for the bag. So yeah. He, 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 and he, the, the Sunday night right matchup. The Dolphins yeah. are never on national TV. Let's keep going. Never. Going. That's all they're talking about on the news. Because, yes. like, again, I get the Miami news. That's all, I mean, they got a show today, a, a nighttime show today. They got the show after the game. They got so much around the Dolphins being able to play on Sunday night football. You know what? And shouts out to the city of Miami for that. that that's, that's always a good feeling because Tennessee is in the same boat. We'll get to be on Sunday night football in, in uh, three weeks against the Chiefs. We may be sacrificial lambs, but it's still a big deal for a team that's never on Sunday night football. You're going to either have to miss church or the first half. You got to pick your poison right. when you're dealing with the Titans playing all those new games. Um, my mama said he still can cuss. I, 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 I believe you, mama. I think he still is too. Now let's go to the other side of the field with their QB issue. Now last week, um, Mr. Cody Pickett got knocked out of the game against Tampa Bay, was concussed. Concussions. Here we go with that again. Now, Mitch Trubisky came in and played well, led them to a win, an upset win over Tampa Bay. But Mike Tomlin said he's going with Pickett on Sunday night. Is that a good move? Would you have stuck with Trubisky, Tasha? Well, when you don't have pressure on you, you tend to perform a lot better. That is very yeah. true. So, yeah, I think that's why Trubisky was just just out there just like, yeah, I'm just going to do whatever because, hey, I'm not the guy. If we lose, it's not on me. It's on my coach and it's on Pickett. Great point. Uh, Coop, do you agree? Do you think that uh, that they should go back with Pickett and go with the youth movement? Yeah, because he knows this season is a wrap and they're going to get rid of Trubisky, so they're just trying to give Pickett all the reps possible. Right. But it's almost to what Tasha was saying about um, Trey Bay Bay in the Bay Area, Trey Lance. Why steal reps from him when the ultimate goal is to get him ready to be your quarterback yeah. in the future? I'm slowly yeah. buying into that, Tasha. Not quite so because I still think Jimmy J can get y'all to the playoffs. Um, and do what? Lose to the Cowboys, but we're going to digress. Now, let's keep the quarterback thing going. We're going to bounce around the NFL real quick. I want to get your thoughts on this first, Coop. Who has been more disappointing this season so far, Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers? I would definitely say Aaron Rodgers. I know it probably looks like Tom Brady, but Aaron Rodgers just look like crap every week. <laughs> like, this started with Minnesota the first week. He has that was not, bad. He oh, that was played, bad. Hey, he has played some bad teams and look bad. This man played the Giants and the Jets and can't score. Like, <laughs> it's certain things that – it, it shouldn't be legal, and you shouldn't lose to the Giants and the Jets in the same season. Leonard Williams last week looked like the second coming of Aaron Donald, busting <laughs> through the line and throwing him on the ground time after time after time. <laughs> Your best receiver is is Alan Lazard, and, and now uh, Randall Cobb is out with a high ankle sprain. It could get worse before it gets better in Green Bay. Tasha, do you agree, or do you think Brady's been more disappointing? I fully agree, because I didn't expect much from Brady anyway, yeah. so he's performing as well as I thought he would, but for old Lyron to go out there popping and bumping his gum, giving us that lip service as he always does. And he's looking old. Man. He's looking man. old. It's time for him to go see TB12's doctor. You know right. what I'm saying? Get the, draw them eyes back. They 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 down it by the cheekbones. And cut um, that greasy, stringy ass hair too while you at it. <laughs> I'm gonna digress because I have no pain. Hey, you are hard on it. <laughs> I can't, I can't comment on that one. Um, hey. <laughs> now, she said greasy stream. Right, she <laughs> called it greasy. All right, now, um, here's a stat to throw out, just to just as a wild stat, because when I saw this, I was like, what the, you know what? Uh, Brady is 12th in touchdown passes. Rodgers is 8th. Jared Goff for the Detroit Lions is 5th, and he didn't play last week, so we're going to move on. I just want to leave wow. that there. That's how bad these two quarterbacks, these two goats, are struggling. Sorry, Mike. We had to. We had to keep it real. Now, Tasha, you received some good news this week. Your 49ers are, are, are getting a new player returning home to California. Mister Run CMC himself, Christian McCaffrey, got traded from Carolina to San Francisco. Um, Tasha, but you're the 49er faithful. What are your thoughts on that move? 
Well, I mean, I was happy because remember, I sent you the message. I said, damn, I said, they out here shopping Christian McCaffrey, you know, and then wow. when I, I get on Twitter and I see it and then Mike has sent it to me on Instagram. As long as he can stay healthy, it, that, that's a good move. I mean, I don't see us, what they say in the temptations, we can't go anywhere but up with this. Because now, <laughs> right. you, as in Debo, you have a wide receiver who's a runner and in McCaffrey, you got a running back that's a catcher. Ah, I see what you did yeah. there, T. Sizzle. That now, takes, Cole, that takes that, a now, lot Cole. of the pressure and, and stuff off of Debo that gives uh, Garoppolo more time now because he does have a viable running back. So he's not always worried about, oh, I'm in the pocket. Let me hurry up and throw this ball to Debo and then throw an interception. This gives him a better chance to say, up, oh, down, collapse. Let me hand this off to, to Christian to, you know, run CMC. Let him do something. His last four season healthy, he had a, a thousand yards rushing and a thousand yards receiving. I hate you, San Francisco. I'm sick of y'all. <laughs> I'm sick of all of y'all. Now, cool. Let's talk money because you know you like to talk about that bag. As you can see, yes, his, his card is bigger than my whole place right now. Um, <laughs> let's talk about the bag, cool. The, the 49ers gave up a second round, third round, and fourth round pick in 2024, and a fifth round pick, I'm sorry, in 2023, and a fifth round pick in 2024. Are you a fan of that compensation for a player that's been injured as much as, as McCaffrey? I, I think it was worth it only because they're a team that sees their, their rise is right now. They right. see that the Rams are slipping. Oh, yes. Tasha, did, did, you, did you zap him because of, of, of his <laughs> – Oh, here he is. He's back. Yeah. I think you just – I think it's worth it. In the long run, it may be too much because he's going to get hurt. But right now, you're playing for this season. Right. And since you're playing for this season, you you just go let it all hang out. You've already paid Debo. So you feel that, hey, let's go for it. This division is, is, is ours. The NFC looks weak. And they, yes, feel, like, they feel like they can play with Dallas and uh, Philly. So they're not worried about Green Bay, Tampa Bay, the Saints. So they feel like let's go get a, let's get a good ring. You know what? I, I, I agree with that a thousand percent. Natasha, let's put a, a number on this. Where does this put San Francisco in the pecking order? First, second, third? Are they behind Philly? Are they ahead of Dallas? Where do you see them slotted in the NFC with this move? If he stays I mean, healthy. I mean, this moves them up because you know I had them winning the NFC West anyway. Oh, this, so, this might be a landslide now. Right. So that yeah. I mean that that at least had us in the top four. So right. uh Right, yeah, I think right. I think it, it moves us up. I'm just I just hate who we have at quarterback. I'm just hoping Christian McCaffrey does um, make him better. I mean, hey, Trent Dilfer won one, and I think if, if if we got this guy back there with some decent pieces around him and that stellar yeah. defense, we, we could do some things. So if I mean, that's why made the move. Healthy. Watch out NFL, not just NFC. Yeah. Watch out NFL because they have the defensive pieces that can match up with a Buffalo or a Kansas City. Yeah. And if they can run the ball and play keep away from your top quarterback in the AFC, that could spell trouble. Trouble. I hate this move. Damn it. You can see they public hands. I'm sick of San Francisco. But like, <laughs> think about it. They beat the breaks off of the Rams earlier this year without run CMC. That's all yeah. I'm saying. Sick of it. Now, Let's move on to our survivor picks. Tasha T. Sizzle, you are a survivor. Are you Kelly? Are you Beyonce? Or are you Michelle? Survivor, uh, uh, survivor of the fittest. Survivor. Hey, did I did I not pick Minnesota last week? You picked Tampa Bay with me. You we better get some black. And and the karmic so energy from 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 the Black Panther struck us down. We hold on though. In our defense, Tom Brady was playing against a secondary that had no Mika Fitzpatrick and two backup. Uh, quarterbacks plan, and they only Man. scored 18 points. You let us down. And then, and then he want to go over there and yell at that offensive line. That couldn't have been me. That couldn't, like Keyshawn Johnson said, you ain't going to talk to me that way. Hey, what you say, Tasha? When your shoulder get in the middle of my chest? <laughs> hey, I would have told him, if you, if you would have been at uh, damn practice all summer, and then you went to uh, Bob Kraft's uh, wedding, like that right. was a must. He, he 92. What you go to his wedding for? 
<laughs> wow, cool. Hey, Bill Belichick went in there and had a shutout win last week. What did Bill Belichick say? He said, because I was busy. I had things mm. to do. Tom Bowles, you're going to lose your team because of Tom Brady. Tom Bowles is going to lose his job along with the Carolina coach. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's going to be right there with Matt Rule yeah. looking for a college or a coordinator job. Gotcha. Now, Mike, who's our reigning champion, he he kind of he got us his pick. He says, with all of that that we said, he's taking Tampa Bay over Carolina. I guess he ain't betting against black, so I guess he's safe. Mm. Tasha, who's your survivor pick this week? Can you keep the streak alive? Uh, I'm going to go with Cincinnati over the Falcons, over them Dirty Birds. Well, mm. Y'all slandered Marcus Mariota's name about a month ago. <laughs> d- 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 ain't no y'all. <laughs> ain't no y'all. Yeah, and by y'all, I'm pointing at the bottom of the screen. Yes. <laughs> he said yes. He's, he's sitting on that. I'm still slandering him. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out how the heck did he lo- how he beat Frisco. How did that happen? Tasha? Hey, I, a I kept bit thinking of they were watching the game, and I was like, maybe this is a rerun or something. Or this is a <laughs> ain't no way they down twenty one to seven to Atlanta Falcons because we had we got a quarterback that don't do nothing. Hey, look, wow. you, look, you slowly winning the, me over with the Garoppolo. All right, you're slowly winning me over because I'm seeing that happen in Tennessee, and I'm about ready to go with a youth movement. But yeah. the last thing we'll say about San Francisco is maybe. McCaffrey can do for uh, Garoppolo what King Henry did for Tannehill when he first started. Which Cover is, him which up is, with a bunch of big plays. Which is something right. that also something we don't want him want to happen is maybe get, extend his contract. Oh no, it's Trey Bay Bay all the way. Y'all in a much better position than Tennessee yeah. from the quarterback standpoint. But if McCaffrey can take your five yard swing pass and go to the, to the house, it takes all the pressure off a mediocre quarterback. Yes. We live yeah. this in Tennessee. Shouts out to King Henry. All right, so we have Mike with Tampa Bay, Tasha with the Cincinnati being gals. All right, now the NBA is in full swing. It kicked off on Tuesday. Have y'all been watching John Moran? Oh, I'm yeah. Digress on that. Have y'all been? Let me digress on that. NBA League Pass is free till Monday, y'all. Find your local cable provider and find League Pass. The games are free. Any team, any market. Watch you some NBA this weekend. Um, So last week we played true or false. This week, I'm putting your feet to the fire. We're going to do some predictions. Coop, I'm coming to you first. Who is your way too early prediction to meet in this year's NBA Finals? To, um, last year, I got Boston and Golden State again. You're running it back. Boston You're- even looks better. They look better than last year. I'm running back. Yeah. Yeah, they look better than last year. Boston was impressive in, in that season opener uh, against yeah. – uh, uh, was that Philly they played? John? Uh, yeah. Yeah, they played. No. Yeah, yeah it was Philly. Yeah. Malcolm Brogdon is a huge addition. They yeah. are stout at the guard position. They can defend the wings. Brown and Tatum are fantastic. Golden State looks like Golden State, although they did catch an L last night against Denver, who's finally playing like Denver's supposed to. Tasha, who's your finals matchup? Of course, you know, I'm going to always go with anything that's led by KD. Um, <laughs> Hey, and they I got the win last night over Toronto. Yeah. And I got to take my pick back. I said I didn't think Golden State was going to make it to the finals. They look good. They look good. I can't yeah. front. They, Steph Curry is ageless. They yeah. got depth. He they, got, they got he, some, some pieces. He's he on that Pharrell diet. Like, how everybody say Pharrell <laughs> is a vampire because he ain't aging? Right. <laughs> For real, might be a vampire. Um, so, all right. So, you are you running it back then? You got the Warriors and and the and the Nets, y'all. If it's not my team, can it please be the Warriors and the Nets? Can KD finally exercise the demons that is Oakland and San Francisco in the Bay Area? I mean, um, again, again, that's you know, I'm a Giannis fan as well. So, and and you just led me to my pick. I got Giannis. We going small market. I got Giannis coming out the East. Versus the Memphis Grizzlies uh, in the finals, and we'll do our finals. Mm. Next year. But uh, Ooh, Snick is right. Well. That's a fight coming out the West. Now, uh, yeah, who's your MVP this year, Tasha? Dum 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 dum
MVP this season. I want it to be KD. Okay. Hey, KD averaging 30 a game. Hey, he's off to a good start. Um, and Shamika <laughs> says, uh, go to state. Uh, if they're healthy, that's going to be a tough out. I do agree. But yeah. Memphis was standing toe to toe with them before Jaw went down in game yeah. four last year. Cool. Yeah. Who's your MVP? Um, probably Luca is going to get it because he's he's going to put up the numbers, and they've been pushing for him to be MVP for the last three years. He he can't they win have. anything, but he's going to average thirty five and fifteen. But he ain't going to win nothing, but they're going to let him be. Just like they let Jokic win MVP. But we know it should they be gonna either. They're going to keep it European is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. You but, be it. <laughs> but, but most exciting, definitely, uh, Ja is probably the more deserving of MVP. But his numbers won't be able to match up with Luka because Luka shoots every shot, and he's going to get to the line 15 times. So he's going to average a – 34, 35 points a game, and then he going to have more points than Ja. Now, right now, just, just to let y'all know how they get down, and he don't, they don't have no stats in front of them right now. Right now, Luka is averaging 36, 9, and 6. See what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> That's the number. That's what looking up this morning. Look, Ja's this, averaging yeah. 41, but to your point, Coop, they're without Jaron Jackson Jr. They're without uh, Dylan Brooks. They're without three rotation players that will be back right. soon. So Ja has to carry that load. He won't carry that type of load for the whole season. Right. He's a facilitator by nature that he is a, a scorer like Luca. So, but, but did you see street clothes almost end up in street clothes against the Clippers the other night? You see what I'm talking about? Look at him like get your I, you know what up. I told y'all two games. That's you said it. You said two games. Hey, he got baby legs. Like his his legs don't work. Every time he jumps, he has to lay on the ground. I, I don't understand it. I, I can't That's, figure it out. Right, Shannon Sharp said it best. Get your big butt up off the floor. You Man. have to score too much, Dwayne Wade. That's street what clothes <laughs> almost <laughs> ended up in street clothes hey, of the he, night. He he getting his wardrobe ready now because he knows he's going to get another four or five days. He buy Gucci, Fendi. He, right. he got Balenciagos. He, he ready. He gets his outfit ready now. Now, ladies, y'all heard how he knew all of these name brands. So if he ever hits the market... Y'all know he know where to go buy you the birthday and Christmas <laughs> gifts. All right. So, but look, the, both of these people, uh, these people, well, both of them have have uh, jumped on this morning in the midst of a lot of stuff that's going on in their lives today. So they get my shout out. Shout out to T Sizzle. Shout out to Wayne for showing up in the in the rain, showing up right. in the sleep. They delivering that mail in the snow. I am very very <laughs> thankful for that. I know y'all got busy days, so we're gonna get to your shout out, T Sizzle. Who you shouting out? Even though I'm mad at them, I'm going to shout out to Cora Aplata. That's the water company here who cut my damn water off this morning <laughs> without ever giving me a notice. We have been in this particular house since February. We have never received one bill. Cool. They didn't wow. put the meter in the ground until three weeks ago. The Two days before I left to go see Paul is when they put the meter in the ground. Because when I came back, they finally had it cemented over. They cut my damn water off this morning. <laughs> but what if I was walking around here sour? Cool. Uh -oh. I, look, cool. I don't know how you're going to top that. I, like, hey. she so was I'm going anything here. On my hey, this is what they give me. I asked him. I said, <laughs> I said, I said, Puerto Rico, Corto, sin factura. Like, why you cutting my water off without a fact, without a... a, a a shit a bill. And I'm glad you explained what you just said because I had no idea what you was I saying. thought she said H Ventura. I was like, well, what's right. that have to do with it? Quarto, quarto, quarto. I didn't know what it was. You said quarto, Baltimore quarto quarto is, is to cut. I said, why did I asked him why did you cut? I, I, I said, I said, Porque Corto mi agua sin factura. <laughs> like, why did oh, you okay. cut my water with the, with no fucking I mean oops with no damn um <laughs> Utility. This beam. is a morning show, Tasha. Right. right. What, what y'all? This what? This what he get? Does this look like any kind of bill? Their water right. bills are like red and blue. That's a that's a Popeye's receipt. <laughs> <laughs> he just tore this off and said, "Here, here, bitch, go pay this." <laughs> you know? hey, the sandwich with the with the with the uh, with the extra sauce on the side. Right. Okay, Tasha. Moving on in a hurry. Cool boy, you shout now. Can you talk I'm that? Shout now to the. Uh, since our dog, uh, Eddie George, and the Big Blue Tigers, shout out to the Big Blue Tigers. They won two in a row. All right. Good luck on, good luck on winning game three today. And hopefully they can win the woeful 
uh, OVC. <laughs> right. Speaking of, right. Now, I want to send a shout out to, to a few people. I'll go through this quickly. One to two special ladies. One, Miss Stephanie Coulter, who completed her breast cancer walk yes, uh, last Saturday. Yeah. She was doing that while we we're on the show. Shout out to her for that. And for my mom, AP Coulter, who, who yes, I'm going to go ahead and say this, called me yesterday. She had her follow up visit. Her, the cancer has not spread. There's no signs of it in her body. And uh, we are fired up. Her birthday is on Tuesday. So happy birthday to my lovely mother, A.P. Coulter. Um, I can't wait to see you for Thanksgiving. So glad that, that um, and so proud of, of the way that they just fall. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. They, they, they're the epitome of CTB. You continue to battle. They just, yeah. just wake yeah. up in the morning and battle. And so it, it puts my, my daily pers- stuff in perspective. And um, and shouts out to those ladies. Also, a shout out to Luca and Ja, who are about to square off in the ring down in downtown Dallas at 7.30, and your boy will need a nap before he goes to check this out live. (laughs) So, with that being said, I want to send a shout out to the the hostesses with the mostest. Shout out to T-Sizzle. Shout out to Coop DeVille. Um, The birthdays are pouring in. Shouts out to everybody. Hey, you know how we get down. We'll see y'all in uh, six days and 23 hours. Until then... Peace. Peace. Uh, Walk slow. Walk slow. Drink uh, a lot of water. Uh, uh, they call up Mr. Bish with not because of the side. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, shout out to Miss Hastings. We out of here. Oh, yeah. Is it cancer? Put your shoulders in it. Uh, uh. <laughs>